You're stiff as a board. At the start of this year, I made a goal to get my front splits. The motivation to train my flexibility had always come in fits and starts, where I'd be inspired for a few months and stop training because I'd either hit a plateau or just become too lazy. This time I wanted to build a practice that became a habit and yielded lasting results. My main resource for training the front splits is Christopher Summers' Gymnastics Bodies program. I followed his 45 minute workout approximately once a week and was able to achieve my front splits on both sides consistently in about 5 months time. In this video, I'll go over some of the most effective exercises for training the front split. These are used not only in the GB program, but are the bread and butter exercises also used by many other teachers. Let's get started. The front split can be broken down into two main focuses, the hamstrings and the hip flexors. Mobility of the hamstrings allows for the front leg to touch down while the hip flexors allow for the back leg. Many of the prescribed exercises will target one of these two areas. In addition to these two focuses, there are three other areas that contribute to the depth of a front split. These are the quadriceps, calves, and ankles. Developing the strength and mobility of these areas creates a more holistic, well-balanced split, and the effects also carry over into the hamstrings and hip flexors. Before we dig into these exercises, I like to always warm up with a quick round of dynamic stretching. I'll start with 10 lateral leg swings with each leg, followed by 10 front leg swings with each leg. The key here is to start gentle and allow the swing of the leg to gradually increase your range of motion with each successive rep. Another great exercise is the bouncing standing pike. Again, you want to start off gentle and increase the range of motion with each rep. I do this for 20 reps. Gymnastics Bodies also has a nice modification of this called two squat, two pike, where you alternate between a bouncing pike and squat. Starting with a standing pike is a great way to stretch the lower back and prime the hamstrings for the more intense stretches later. The ideal form is having both feet together, keeping the knees locked and folding with a flat back. Aim for getting the fingers touching the floor, then after that, the palms. Hold the stretch for two minutes. During the stretch, you can actively flex the quadriceps to keep the knees locked. This also slightly relaxes the hamstrings, your target muscles, through a process called reciprocal inhibition, or RI. The contracting of certain muscles, whether the agonist or antagonist group, during a stretch is a method called proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, or PNF stretching for short. This is a very effective practice that I'll be referencing throughout the video. This next exercise involves the use of a block, or in my case, a small foam roller. Standing with your feet about a foot apart, place the upper half of the front foot on the block to achieve an elevated position. Then lean forward and reach down as if doing a standing pike. Both legs are straight with the quadriceps actively flexed. Hold for 1 minute 30 seconds, then switch legs. The inclined calf is a great way to target the calf, hamstring, and lower back. A very similar variation of this exercise is done by the knees over toes guy in the form of an inclined Jefferson curl using a slant board and with weights. The wide hurdler is one of my favorite stretches from the gymnastics bodies program. It's a slight variation of the single leg hamstring stretch. Start seated on the floor and elevate one foot by placing the heel on a block. Bend the other leg and position the knee facing outward so that both knees make a 90 degree angle. The foot of the bent leg should be tucked tight aside the butt. Lean forward towards the foot of the straight leg, placing the center of the chest over the length of the leg. The aim is to first compress deep and then to reach your head towards the toes. Hold the stretch for 1 minute 30 seconds, then switch legs. Again, remember to flex the quad of the straight leg.
The ATG split squat is one of the most heavily prescribed exercises by the knees over toes guy. Standing with your feet apart in a lunge position, bend the front leg while keeping your torso upright. The goal is to lunge forward enough so that your hamstring covers your calf while the heel remains in contact with the floor. The knee of the back leg lowers to the point where it is just above the floor without touching it. Perform six reps on each leg. When you do this, you'll understand why he's called the knees over toes guy. While this is intended for developing and optimizing knee health, the split squat is also a very useful tool for front splits. It targets the ankle mobility of the front foot while also addressing the hip flexor and quad of the rear leg. The dynamic nature of this exercise is also very practical for building strength. To get a full progression for achieving the ATG split squat, check out the link to his channel I left in the description. We'll finish with this final exercise targeting the quad and hip flexor. Using a wall, place the knee of the rear foot on the floor and the shin vertical flush against the wall. The front leg will be in a comfortable lunge position. Keeping the torso upright, our goal is to gently try to lower the quad of the back leg towards the floor. If you have tight quads or hip flexors, you will quickly feel the stretch. Make sure the hips remain square and the foot of the front leg is not too far forward. The target here is the quad and hip flexor of the rear leg. Hold the stretch for 1 minute 30 seconds, then switch legs. Vertical shin is a great exercise from the GB program, and effectively addresses the mobility of the rear leg for the front split. If you're interested in checking out their stretch series, I've left a link to their site in the video description. The front split may be one of the most meaningful flexibility goals I've reached. Achieving this feat in my late 30s has taught me that the body is still malleable as long as we're willing to find a way. In the words of coach Christopher Summers and the other wise teachers, consistency is more important than intensity. I wish you a steady path to your goals, and until next time, move better, climb harder.